hi guys welcome back to my channel um on today's episode of painting beauty we have guest star tj nacho <laughs> so for all you guys that don't know tj nacho which i know is as ignacio is my fiance or do you know me as what well? else in today's episode we're going to be bringing light into a topic that people normally don't speak about and it is what's the word taboo taboo it's taboo so why don't you tell me uh, about what do you do for a living well i do <laughs> just about anything uh but most people know me as dj nacho i am a dj uh during the week during weekends pretty much uh any type of event no i'm not plugging my my services at this point but either way <laughs> um I, that's what I do. Um, it's it's something that started off as a hobby of mine, but given my problem, given what I go through, it wasn't just a a hobby. It slowly became you know something that I had to do. It became something that I was happy to do because it helped fuel. It feed the yeah it fed it fed what what I was always into mine is uh, an addiction it's it's a strange addiction that nobody really sees and a lot of people know about or some people know about but nobody really sees it I am a compulsive gambler and at what age did you start gambling uh well I started at the age of 18 you know legally that's the age you can buy scratch off tickets and stuff like that is that was the first type of gambling you did with scratch off tickets yeah I started off uh, spending money doing that it was more of a how do I put it it was just something you know fun as I saw it fun I did it wasn't really doing too much with it but very quickly because I actually won my first, uh, one of my first tickets that I bought was a winner. Was it really? Yeah, and that's why I got hooked. You know, I was constantly buying. The The biggest part of my problem was being lucky. What do you mean? I would actually win, you know, and I, and I would actually, if I bought a ticket, I would get 20 bucks, $50. I, it, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't be a a time that I can remember where I just, you know, would hit a, a low. So, I, but I wasn't doing it all the time then. So how long were you doing scratch-offs before you started doing anything else? Actually, I started doing some, uh, going out to casinos when I turned 21. I started going to Detroit. I went to Detroit and took a road trip out there and slowly started to see you know, started to see that I was really enjoying, you know, doing that. So I would go out there, drive two and a half hours just to go and spend a day out at the casino. So you went to Detroit just to go to the casino? Yeah. I wouldn't go to Detroit for anything else. Not that I have a problem with Detroit, but just wouldn't go to Detroit for anything else. I would just go to the casinos out there. And I start to realize then that I was, you know, still doing okay. Mm -hmm. And then for for any guy out there, and, you know, I know a lot of guys that, that go through this, maybe not in the same way I do, but they go through this where everything was okay until child support. So child support hit me pretty hard. I, you know, I was, let's say I was making $1,000 every two weeks. Now I'm reduced to... 600 every two weeks back then it was more of a hurt you know it hurt my my pockets it hurt my ego it hurt my pride you know i'm i was making good money now i'm not now mind you i had no problem with paying you know support for my daughters that was not a problem um it wasn't like i had an issue with with that part of it because i've paid this whole time i'm still paying mm -hmm. but the problem then became I had I was living in a place where the two thousand dollars that I made in a month 
I had to pay pretty much about 14 or 15 of that. So I remember going out to the casino and of course the lucky unlucky streak which was the lucky part of it is I go to the casino now I win six seven hundred dollars what were you playing slots or slots I, that was my my thing back then I was always doing slots it helped for the first month or two you know I was going to the casino and I was winning some money mm -hmm. so I kind of started to use that as a oh whenever I need some money I can just go to the casino and I don't know why that was a great way to think but sure enough right after that uh, fast forward like even three months after that I'm back at square one I'm back at needing money for the bills and so DJ Nacho wasn't born at that time actually I was like looking for something to do and somebody said hey we need a guitar player slash singer or whatever and I joined I joined a band you know now I'm making ends meet and when I was making ends meet it was awesome but then any any extra money I would you know every once in a while I'd still go to the casino I'd still have a good time at the, back then it started to become more of a problem when was that um a few years later I was actually just going through you know a, a, a young midlife crisis I was just going through a lot of different things and you know always single always have you know trying to have a great time trying to go here trying to go there and I started to then realize that because I was single I was by myself I can do whatever I wanted I was yeah paying my bills paying everything and then anything extra was always going to the casino I never really thought I had a problem. It was something that I never looked at as, oh my God, you know, I have a, I have this issue. I there's something fun that I did. Would you go by yourself or would you go with other people? I would go a lot of times with family members. It started to become an every every three three to four times a week thing. Um, I was actually playing and still going, and you know, I found myself doing stuff like selling my you know selling something selling this selling that always doing your, something your belongings belongings yeah i okay. mean I, I i didn't i didn't think about it you know like uh, i'm spending i'm getting this money so i can go to the casino it's like oh i i always kind of deterred it and say well you know okay i right now i gotta pay the light bill and i need a hundred bucks so needing a hundred dollars i would actually sell something for two or three hundred Interest. I mean, it, it was interesting because I never saw it as a problem. As a matter of fact, I, I always just kind of like glorified. I enjoyed going. You know, I I loved I love going, and I always joked around and said, "Hey, you know, I, I always want to meet a girl that would want to come with me." Mm -hmm. And and you know, today to this day, I'm glad that you know that I that I met you. That I don't have that you're not one to go. You know that you don't really enjoy going. Why would you want someone to to date that? Because altogether? they would understand the the idea of having an extra five hundred dollars and spending four hundred of it at a casino, and you know the, they would enjoy going with me, and we would have a we would have a good time. I mean, this all made sense in my mind. In the meantime, when I was searching for somebody, I always looked for a person that you know was doing their own thing as far as it, like being busy or being, well, having a well, career busy and, and independent because you know I, if I'm I can't I know this sounds horrible but I can't support you I'm not gonna and pay support for, your addiction right I'm not gonna you know pay the I'll pay the mortgage by myself and pay the bills all by myself these are the thoughts that I always had it's like you know I need somebody who can pay their own end or so if someone you met didn't have a job they were off lim like you would not even think about it, dating them it, yeah i mean sorry but you know that you you would do other things and then you wouldn't but you would never consider dating them. right right no i mean like make it yeah make it official a, right. like no, a real no it, it relationship it wouldn't be a relationship 
when you gamble, nobody really knows that you're going through this. Nobody knows that you're spending your money on, you know, everybody, every, in other words, everybody sees that you have a place to live. Everybody sees that you have a car. Everybody sees that, you know, you like in my case, I have rims on my car. I have this. I'm doing that. So where would you get money to get rims for your car or whatever? Everything came from gambling. So you won and then you would buy yourself something. I win and I would buy myself something. Yes. And down to the fact that I wanted to have... You know, I, it was the, the dumbest way to think. Well, you know, I wanted to have a, a nice car. I would probably have $2,000. I would go to the casino and spend and, you know, gamble and win 5000 So now I would go and try to find a nice car. I would go and find a... At one point, I found a 64 Impala. I bought the Impala. Still had a couple do- a couple dollars left. Went back to the casino. Won another ten thousand dollars at the casino, and put the money into the car. And I always went with this back and forth, winning, losing, winning, losing. But I never really thought I had a problem. I was just happy that I would win. I end up fixing this car with pretty much casino proceeds. And what happens right after I'm done with the car? I put it together. I barely had enough money to pay for rent, for the bills, for anything. I found myself selling the car. The part that I hate the most about what I do is the impulse. And then comes the other part that I hate about this, even more than that, is the lying. When I can't do something because I'm gambling I won't tell you well I just spent my last dollar gambling I'll tell you something completely different or I'll tell you whatever it is that I think you want to hear to make to make the the issue go away so that now I don't have to go with you I don't have to spend this money that I don't have but like I said when you look for an independent person Manipulating a person is very easy for me. So you would manipulate the person so that they would give you what you needed? In a way, you know, before you have to get in, into a car, go to the casino. So I'd have to make a fight, uh, pick a fight, and just open a door and leave to then go to the casino. It was so much easier with online gambling because I was spending money directly from the bank account I didn't have to go anywhere I was just sitting at home so I would just want to be left alone and then we you know that was when you know that happened I would talk to my friends and it's always funny because any person that gambles will call you when they just won five thousand dollars so I would call somebody back oh my god man I just won you know twelve hundred bucks and, you know, I would call my family members like, hey, I just won 1200 You know, I'm, I'm actually doing, I'm doing great today. And it felt great. Was that just to make you feel better about yourself that you were Something gambling? I've accomplished, yeah. It made me feel good that I'm accomplishing something. But... How long when, would that money last you once you won? I could win twelve hundred dollars today, and then go back tomorrow and spend another thousand of that, and go back the next day to spend the other two. So it wouldn't last me but a day or two. Some cases, I've actually lost. I've won eighteen hundred dollars and lost it the same day. What's been the most amount of money you've ever lost in a week? If you want to share that. Huh. The most amount of money. Um, I would say about 10000 In a week? In a week. I went into a depression. I went into a state of not going back to the casino. Not going back at all. Well, you didn't have the money to go either, right? No, I, I had I had the money, but the money that I spent was for something else. What was it um, for? It was supposed to be for a down payment on a house. And where did you get $10,000 from? 
I got 10000 from retirement. You withdrew the retirement? Yeah, I withdrew a retirement. Basically, I end up in a really bad place. No. And I end up, you know, stop. I stopped gambling for six months. But gambling meant not going to the casino, not going to whatever. But I was still going to poker games, still going to the store and buying scratch-offs. Still, you know, I was doing <clears throat> light gambling, if you will. That still the dumbest thing ever you know when I look back at it now but I was actually still going out and doing gambling I was still gambling so as long as it didn't consist of you being inside of a casino in your mind you said I it's not gambling. gambling I didn't want anybody knowing that knowing my my to me it then became uh, the secret a mistress you know I've called it that before but only with you you know where we've talked before and shortly into my recovery you know I, I said that I said I feel like I like I had a mistress this whole time you know some somebody that you don't tell anybody about something you don't tell anybody about you know and so any of your relationships no one ever knew they knew that I gamble they didn't really know the amount, the, the level of addiction. You know, over the last 10 years is what I'd say. It was really, you know, it was really getting worse. But it hit, it hit its worst about two years, a year or two ago. And I became DJ Nacho because I love the music. But imagine being DJ Nacho because you can't, because you have to, to, feed your addiction right so you would when you would get paid from gigs you would gamble it yep Probably right after paid. or a few right days after. later right after down to the point where you know i never really took gigs for less i mean i my worth is still my worth you know when it comes to what i do when i play but as the 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 fame the little bit of fame that comes with it it you know, the money gets a little better, so I just had more of a, of a monster to feed. But I didn't have anything else to kind of, you know, take away that, that, that would cause the same amount of excitement. Or, you know, of course, going home with a girl, that's, that's exciting. You know, it's like, take your pick. Go to the casino or get laid. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I'll go to the casino tomorrow. And did it ever affect the relationships you had, like good ones? Every single one. You know, I cope with music. You know, I also cope with, you know, DJing. Now that I'm not gambling, I actually have enjoyed, gotten back into enjoying the craft and enjoying the, the part of it. But I will say the reason why a lot of this, even with Painting Beauty started, is because, guys, I was actually going through the motions when I met Yolanda. You know, I was like, hey, I'm DJ Nacho. She didn't meet DJ Nacho. She met Ignacio. She, you, you tried to. Well, tell I me tried. Who I DJ. tried. I tried to tell her who DJ Nacho was and show her who I am. I'm not like I'm anything major. Or, it's, not, it's not that. It's just that persona that comes well, with Well, you came, you came trying to tell me, describe your own self. Right. Like, you know who I am and people know who I am and I'm, I'm a DJ, I dance, I'm a singer, I'm this, I'm that. And I didn't know who he was because I'm not even from Ohio. So I'm like, okay, you're a DJ, big deal. Right. You're a DJ. Okay. And of course, she knows big name DJs. You know, <laughs> she knows DJs that are on radio stations, DJs that are on TV. So I'm like, Okay, so that's not impressing her. So I started to sing. Eh, a little, little, little something, something. But I start to tell her, you know, like my rules, and I'm this, and this is what I do, and, and, you know, my rules are to protect myself, to protect my, the fact that I gamble. And that would be to, like one of the, the things you, you at, told me was. Keep you at arm's length. Make sure that you're not. Never show up unannounced. Right, never show up unannounced. Never show up. You well, can't stay over. Of course, somebody thinks or thought that that was because I was still with, you know, with other women. And that was the biggest 
a hurdle in our relationship, believe it or not. It was, I would have my phone and I'm doing one of these right here. And if she walked into the room, I'd put it down because I don't want anybody to know that I'm spending $100 online gambling. I'd be happy when I won. But and, then you couldn't share it with me. But I really couldn't say much because it's like, where did this thousand dollars come from? Where did this eight hundred dollars come from? Well, I mean, there was times where I would see you get like playing the little slots, and, I, and, and you. Would I never lied. I would. I hid because I would tell her. I'm. I'm telling you. I'm. I'm online playing my 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 slots or whatever, because to me, it's okay if I spend twenty. Twenty bucks is okay, right? Mm -hmm. But two hundred is not. Because that 200 we could have used for something else, you know. I have always been able to hide everything. I've always been able to get away with, you know, just doing my thing. And with Yolanda, I met a person who is very, very, very smart as far as she's very perceptive. She sees things. Why, why we're together, why we get along and we are so well together is because we can both kind of sense the climate change between us. You know, it, and I mean with the slightest of things. Like someone, it, one of us is off. Like right. something is going on. Right. What's I, bothering I was, you? I'm, I'm a good poker player because I can read when somebody's, you know, holding on a great hand or a bad hand. And for that reason, you know, it's like I've always been able to be perceptive and kind of headed off at the pass. But I feel that vibe, like... Yeah, you are the same as me, where we both kind of feel something's not right. So, Yolanda actually confronted me, but she didn't confront me with, are you gambling? She said, are you cheating on me? And the question, you know, threw me for a loop. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not cheating on you. Because but I was, I, I, I've always said from the beginning of our relationship that if it's whether it's infidelity or whatever it is that's bothering that person i would much rather that person come and tell me and we figure it out as opposed to you having to hide and be hurtful or things you know get ruined to the point where they're not fixable right so i said no that day and I said you know just being funny like you're crazy I don't know what you're talking about but you would much rather me think that you were cheating cheating rather than know that you right. were gambling and because to me that was the darkest secret I've ever I've ever had 25 26 years of doing this mm -hmm. you know I didn't really want you to want you in and the way things happen the way they're supposed to happen it's it's amazing because I had her log into my computer and she logged into my computer and I'm downstairs of all days I'm gambling and I had just won $800 so I'm excited and I'm over here planning the weekend planning things to be to you know what we were gonna do and the email pops up that says you have eight hundred dollars coming in. Well, the, there was actually a few emails, right. so I would say right. you lost this amount, you withdrew this amount, then you gained this amount. So it wasn't that you just won eight hundred. Right. You it would was, always. Right. It was all like you got to see all of that. You were you were actually logging on, and the emails just started to pop up. Yeah, I was. I logged onto his computer, and the Wi-Fi had to be connected. And when I connected the Wi-Fi, all the emails started popping in, so I was getting all these alerts at the top. And it was like, uh, I think, what was it, Bitcoin or something? Yeah. It was just popping up alerts, and I was like, wow. I, I didn't even know what that was. So I go, <laughs> I'm laughing at it now. It was not funny that I lie, 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 lie. You know, th that's the, the number one the, the go-to. No, no, that's not real. That's that's just uh, you know fake money that it is that I'm using. Well, the when I even oh, I just asked, hey, are you, is this real money? And your reaction was, no, 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 yeah, no, no, this is not real. This is you know this I'm just this is all uh, a part of it or whatever. They they give you money and and you know you can. But do I ever points. just ask one time? No. So I asked maybe like two more times. I'm like, are you sure? And then it turned into, 
okay, he just got very upset. Yeah. Got very mad. Because now I'm running. I don't have any. I have other options, which is just tell you get out. Mm -hmm. I'm done with this relationship. I don't. But I've met a person in Yolanda that, like I said, the, the light that I see in her. So for the first time in my life ever, I decided to open up and just say. Well, before that, I before you opened up, I I said oh, to him right. because, and as you guys see these episodes, you'll know that I've also struggled with addiction, a different addiction, but I know what it is to have a problem and not be able to speak to somebody about it. So I told him what I always wanted or needed to hear for me. And that was, hey, if you have a problem or you did, or you may one day just know that I'm still going to be here. And that's what, I, when I think you just... When I heard that phrase or those words, I started to cry. I, I mean, it was uncontrollable. I started crying. And I know that in Yolanda's eyes, like, oh, there it is. He's cheating. You know? no, no, I just knew that there was something going right, on. Right, but I'm saying that that's what, what was more expected, you know, than, than what I then said, which was, I have been gambling, you know, heavily for the last, like, two or three months. You had just, you had just moved in a month, you know, a month before that. Yeah. And it was bad. I mean, I was actually just trying to make ends meet, and the only way that I knew how to, you know, was to win. And wow, that, that that moment, even though that moment when I told you, I actually said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a compulsive gambler, I'm gambling. You didn't, you know, and I my exact words right after I finished, I said, well, I'm sure you're gonna leave and you're gonna leave me, but if that's the case, let me know now, don't, don't waste my time, you mm -hmm. know, don't. And I, I tell you what, to, to know, to hear this, what she said next was the reason why I like I hear this phrase every day in my head and she says I'm I'm not going anywhere we're just gonna figure this out I didn't know what to say I still maybe about a, a week or two after the fact now I'm trying my hardest to control my gambling so not give did, up. So did that, like you expecting me to leave, is that something that you feared or experienced throughout your life? I've experienced that throughout my life, or in most cases, I've actually just caused it to end. Purposely? Purposely. Like, okay, I'm not letting you into this. You, you obviously are asking too many questions. This is not for me. Now that you think back at it, is there certain relationships that you think that would have been able to still hold on or do you think that no no i mean it, it because i wasn't willing to be open no matter what you see you guys see me impatient moving the the in throughout the interview you see me jittery and doing my thing it's not from nerves it's it's a uh, a thing that i that, you know over time i'm not gambling i have to deal with this when i when things get uncomfortable for me that was my my out was going to gamble I was calm and relaxed I wasn't you know struggling I wasn't doing anything has it affected your opinion about yourself because you Oof. said that you were this big deal DJ Nacho who put in the rules and set the standards had all these women so what is that I mean is that true or or it did has it changed It has not, it's changed a lot now. I say it has not changed how I view myself, but it has changed the way I, I, I see things. You know, I, I, I'm actually at a better, a way better place now, but it's changed the way I viewed myself for a long time coming out of, you know, re, you know, coming into recovery. Um, it, by the way, the date, February 17th of this year was the last day that I've ever gambled one set and that's the, the from here on out you know the the date that I can say 21721 part of being a gambler is being selfish you know I worried only about me how am I gonna eat everything is worth money 
So the more I have, the more, you know, I can sell or get, you know what I mean? That was my, my thing. So I always, I'm always going to come off as selfish. It's something that uh, is hard to break. Every sentence starts off with I, you know, it's, it's not we, it's so something that you're helping me with and you've, you've made it very clear to me and, you know, you've helped me with the fact that it's not just I, it's us. It's, you know, the kids, your, you know, your kids, but now my kids too, you know, they, it's, it's something that, you know, we, I'm learning how to just be able to share, how to be able to not stress over the things like having a hundred dollars and going out to eat with the family versus going out to the casino. Has it ever affected your relationship with your own children? Very much so. I mean... It's affected my relationship with my kids, and I would say not directly, meaning that I didn't take money from them, or that's not the case. It's more so I stopped having my daughters come over. So time? Time. Most of the time, you know, I was working full time, you know, two jobs. I was working, you know, doing, I was working at, uh, you know, a factory and then DJing on the side. And I would always tell my kids, you know, oh, oh my God, you know, I'm so super busy this weekend. I, I really don't have time to pick you guys up. And it's something that I, I wish I could take back because the times where I didn't have gigs, I would plan my day to go to the casino. So you know? would you ever spend time with your family, like parties and get togethers? No, no I, I became more of a homebody because I would go to the casino and lose money throughout the week and I wouldn't have money to even put gas in my car. Once you hit, once I walked into the casino doors, mm-hmm. all that guilt went away. So all there was no, nothing that could make you feel bad because right now all you could focus on <clears throat> was gambling. Gambling, winning. That was pretty much, that was pretty much it for me. It was constantly going in, hoping to win. So when you ran out of money, your own money, if you didn't win, mm-hmm. how would you find more money to to feed that addiction? I would actually sell something that I owned um, or borrow the money. In most cases, you know, it would always be something minimal, like 100, 150 bucks. But that was how I did it. Or if I was with a person that can you know that was little you know doing better in life then i would just figure out a way you know hey i i I need a hundred dollars for whatever you know i and if they said no would you pressure them or would you manipulate it or manipulate it you know uh any any form of manipulation from sex to anything you know and I'm not, I'm talking like this. I mean, it sounds like I'm, like I really don't care, have a care in the world. These are the, the things that I'm dealing with right now. Like once you... Well, for someone who's addicted to something, they actually don't have a care in the world except for the addiction. Exactly. So I, I think about these things right now and, you know, I'm disgusted with myself to a point where, like, wow, I really stooped down to that level to make this to do that to do this it's tough it, it it's something that you know you guys you guys see us together you guys see us out having a good time i can't control money now for the next year two years you know what it's like to tell a puerto rican man that your woman is not going to control the entire how money is spent where money goes where it doesn't go so these are the things that I'm in recovery for. You know, recovery for me is, is you know, I started off, I was like, oh, I just won't gamble. That's just that. That's simple. That's easy. That's the, that's the easy part. And little did you know that all oh. these different Ev- thinking about, characters came mm-hmm, with it. Thinking about, sometimes I'll, I'll sit there. I remember our first... One of our first major arguments came from right after I got... I mean, we argue, like any couple, uh, 
sometimes more than some and then most of the time less than others so it doesn't you know how, how we stay together but one of our biggest arguments ever, ever came from something very insignificant to me but I didn't realize how it was affecting me I was actually cleaning out my car and I open up a drawer I find like two hundred dollars worth of scratch off tickets you old I didn't realize how much anger now I'm dealing with this guilt and I walk in the house and I'm yelling out the top of my lungs and I'm you know you to you you're wondering what the hell got into got into Nacho what's right. going on with him I'm mad but Yolanda was not and is not the person that you want to say no to. Sometimes women don't realize how much power they really have. Their voice, their the way that they talk. Yeah, we men call that nagging. But sometimes nagging with a purpose can set a man straight. Listen, I, as much as, you know, I, I complain about, you know, to her and I say, well, you know, you're just nagging, you're this, you're that. She really said, you know, it's like, she's not going anywhere. So, damn it, she's not going anywhere. Uh, how can I get her to shut up? Just be quiet. Okay, I'll do it. Don't worry, I'm not gambling. I'm not gambling. I'm not gambling. She didn't care. It, well, it didn't matter. You're going, to, you need to get help. And I, I th I've learned because I, I have since started therapy for um, family members that are affected because they live with a gambler, is that every person needs to be held accountable for their actions. And it's hard when you love that person because you just want to be there and, and just say, okay, it's all right, it's all right, but you don't. The person is not going to stop if they know that you're just gonna fold, so and you have to stand firm. Right. Yeah, you have to stand firm. Not to insult them or to belittle them, but say, hey, no, look, the reality is that you do have a problem, and I am not going to be part of this problem. So until you get help, then don't count me on, and don't count me into anything, right? And so I quickly, quickly learned that, okay, I don't want her to go anywhere. She is actually everything I've ever looked for or wanted in a person so the fear of losing her or you know just like really set things straight for me and it, it made me realize really quick I need to fix this I need to figure this out I went into a quick self-assessment and like okay wait a minute I'm not going to lose her so I first started by just doing therapy how did you feel about therapy? Was that a, a, <laughs> a cool thing for a DJ to do, or was that <laughs> something that you hid? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I, don't, I laugh at it, but I'm not worried about how people view me. I, I, if anything, I, I like to be the influencer, you know what I mean? I like to be that guy, but as a DJ, I don't really care what you think about me. I have an ego. I worry about how I, I view things. It's like, if you don't like my music, you can go somewhere else. How did you feel the first time you saw the, when you went to therapy? It was interesting. Our first session was just, you know, just asking questions, you know, what, what, how, where did you grow up? How did you grow up? Were you happy? And you know, all these questions. And about our third session, she instantly said something to me that, that you know, I, I'm very happy about. It was just like somebody over here she wasn't i'm over here talking about and and yolanda this and yolanda she said oh, hold on one second it's like i want to stop you right there who's gambling who was gambling was it her or was it you i said oh well well that, that that'd be me well well and i you know i stopped for a second i'm thinking oh, you know oh, man this is going to be i'm not i'm not comfortable with this but her words, what she, you know, how she made me feel right afterwards were, yeah, okay, well, that happened. But you need to take accountability for your action. 
that you didn't gamble the money, I did. So how am I going to be mad at you for us not having any money in the house? Be mad at yourself. And then if you're mad at yourself, figure it out. You know, you, you learn how to deal with the issue. So therapy has been great. I started doing, um, I looked online and started doing a, a recovery program. And it really started me off on the right path. You know, now I'm looking into doing the 12-step program. And, you know, it's, it'll be something very soon. And we'll link all that information down below. Oh, yeah. But for someone to come and tell you and admit to you something, a secret, their honesty has now caused that person, which is me, to struggle with trust. And it doesn't have to do with women. It doesn't have to do with money. It could be with what he ate for breakfast. Literally anything that he says, I always feel like, well, did he really? And it's natural for you to feel that way. But it's a long... Well, we didn't know that at first. Yeah, though. we didn't. Oh, my God. We no, didn't. we did not. Because I'm I'm going to the bathroom. Are you really going to the bathroom? Like, yes. Can you leave your phone right here? Like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You think I'm going to go gamble in the bathroom? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm thinking, why would you think that? You know, what? What? what's really, the, what's hap- what's really happening or what's going on? And we then get... You know, through therapy, through right. sessions, we get told why that's the case. And so now the 12 step teaches you how to take accountability. It teaches you how to be like, forgive yourself and and forgive others. And actually, I, I think it's even told you to um, make make amends with people that you. Right. Um, and it, it's something that I'm looking forward to doing because I'll think about certain scenarios certain things where i'm you know somebody might think wow nacho's really a jerk you know he 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 told me he was going to come and hang out and he never really showed up this could have been years ago and i they didn't even know that you know i didn't have gas money to get to the place you know and why am i going to call you up like oh the reason why i didn't show up is because i gambled all of my money away now i'm sitting at home with no food no, you don't tell people that. Like, no, man, I'm busy, you know, DJ life. Right, and it's still I mean, it's still now. hard now. Um, I always say, and I always tell him, he's, he's actually working on getting a sponsor <clears throat> because there's things that he can't talk to me about, and that's okay. I don't mind it as long as he still talks to somebody else and reaches out to somebody else because I think... It's okay to not be okay. It's okay not to be okay, but it's still a struggle. You still have those... Do you still have now those urges that the thought crosses your mind or listen i can't drive past a casino without remembering that one time or it's tough on me and it's just as equally as tough on her because for me it's tough because i'm battling the fact that i don't i i can't do this anymore and i have to deal with the guilt for her it's will he ever do it again is he doing it right now and maybe he's you know still hiding it all of these things that we deal with, it's, it's it's something that when we do talk about it, it most of the time ends up in an argument. It, it ends up in, you know, in, in you don't trust me. Why don't you trust me? Or, you know, or I don't trust you. And then <laughs> you it's know? also, he's scared of that disappointment. So oh, just God. so you guys yeah. know, it's, you're, there's people, it's almost impossible to not um, fall back into that. And it, that's not the failure. The failure is if you don't, you know, accept it, own it, and say, hey, I had a slip up. And then you don't start from the beginning again. You just pick up from that same day that you left off and continue moving forward. And I think that's what his biggest fear is, to have that disappointment. She, she says something to me that's actually interesting. You said, I'm not, I won't be mad if you do it again. Right. I'll be mad if you do it again and then lie about it. Yes. Which, to me, I'm like, was well, she giving me the, the chance to go do it again? Like, oh, so if I do it and tell you about it, then we're good. No. No, exactly. <laughs> so so that's what I mean is. No, to, we, if you do it, we. I mean, we're still going to, I'm, I'm not going to go nowhere, but guess what? We're going to be broke. <laughs> that's all that's going to happen. So if you do decide to do it, we're going to be broke. But. If you do it and then drag it on, I know what that is. To drag it on and hide it, it means, mm-hmm. oh boy, here comes mean 
Nacho. Here comes hurtful Nacho. Here comes Nacho that will say anything just to, you know, ignite this this fight so that he can have time to go and try to figure it out. And yes, that also means that that fight. If I look over and say, I can't stand you. Okay, I'm still not going anywhere. That mean, that anger, that that um, it causes you to say some things that doesn't matter how hard you try, you're not gonna take it back. You're not going to. I've actually just so that I can get an hour, just to give you an example. I've purposely called her by an ex's name. Do you know? Even now, I think about that, and I sit there and go, dude, what, are, are you serious? Like, why would you do something like that? It's not because I want to hurt her. It's leave me alone. I got gambling to do. It's not, you know, I, I it, and it's it's emotional. It's a really emotional part of, the, of, of it because I've gotten that low where I've said, you know, you take your kids to daycare. Well, why? Because if she got in the car and left with the kids, I have another 15 minutes to sit down and gamble. You know, I've done and said stupid stuff. And, you know, it's like people might, you guys might be watching this right now and say, that's it, he's gambling? I wish, I wish you, you know, you would sit back and think about what happens when you have $1,200 to pay the, the rent that you earned or you and your partner earned and when you go in there's only three hundred dollars you tell me how you're gonna feel and to i i learned i had no idea when he told me about gambling i knew okay it's an addiction people don't know how to stop gambling but the process of him being sober <laughs> i thought i was literally seeing someone sobering up from the withdrawal process was the same as a drug. The the anxiety, the depression, the fidgeting, it was it was terrible. It was like he was literally withdrawing from a drug. And it, it sometimes he gets it he gets it like he gets the same way where he'll start getting antsy and stuff and I'm like, Alright, what's going on? And it's it's hard. It's it is. Hard. But you are how many days sober? I am actually five months and one day sober. <laughs> that was my first program that I went to. I, I, I had just been sober for a week. And I used the words just been sober. I've, I've only, no, I said, I've only been sober for a week, guys. And the guy stopped me and said, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. He said, I don't even know you and I'm going to interrupt you. Don't ever use the word only. Don't ever use the word just. Every day that you are not doing what you used to do, every day that you're not drinking, gambling, doing drugs, that's a victory. That's and that you, you celebrate those moments. The little moments. The little moments. So I'm learning how to celebrate. Who cares, five months? I mean, show, talk to me when you've done it for five years. And I tell you what, Five months seems like an eternity for me. And we when, both celebrate little things. Right. You know, I've celebrated little things by I needed a phone charger. Oh, I would just order it. I, I have what? the money now. Yeah, I have I have money in my account. There's money in the account. There was $20 left over and the charger was 10 bucks. I didn't... Normally, to, to somebody else, this sounds like, what? This is, this is something you live with? I couldn't afford to buy food every day the dollar menu was my friend putting five bucks in for gas and then calling somebody to pick me up these are the things that i've gone through i've learned how to live like a poor man i never really got to go and enjoy life i'm doing things now like riding a, learning how to ride a motorcycle why because i i enjoy the freedom you know i enjoy the fact that i let go of something in my life but it's still hard, though, and oh it's, it's hard to not yes. like the way you see the way 
you were seeing things was if it wasn't gambling it was wasting money oh my god yeah we, we couldn't I, it was an argument to buy leather couches because he saw it in his eyes that it was wasting money it's a waste of money because of uh, I, I wanted to make sure that I had three thousand dollars in an account so that and it couldn't double up if we bought couches right so you know it, it's that that thing where I still struggle I'm learning how to live my life 26 years of doing something 26 years that I've spent gambling spending money blowing my money on this doing that doing a third I've had some great things i've had nice cars i've had a house two houses three houses i've had all of these things that i did because when i gambled and i win here 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 world see that i could that i have this nice car see that i'm doing just fine well where do you see yourself in the next six months we're planning a wedding so in the next six months i see us saving that money you know, making making everything possible. Not because I want somebody to see that I'm, oh, look, he's doing so much better. No, I want it to be a, a testament of what we've, what we've accomplished. You know, I, if I would have still been gambling, there would have been no wedding. There would have been no way for me to afford that wedding. And so you guys will hear it on here that is where I see me as being able to give you the wedding you deserve. So if there's one piece of advice that you can give to someone who is struggling with gambling addiction um, or any addiction, but most mostly gambling, what is it? How, what is there that you can say that you feel that someone needs to hear to give them hope that there is? help out there 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 is help out there the the one thing I could always say is if you're going through it and you know you know in your heart that it's that you that you have a problem you know you know, you know what the what the steps are you know you hear me talking and you say man I I kind of go through the same thing or man you can still be in denial and at some point it'll it'll hit you like it hit me just like a ton of bricks but always know that you know there's there's room and there's still time to change i've been doing that for 26 years and i just decided to that, that was it for me i'm done um i wasn't done because of her i was done because i was done and i stay sober because of her I stay sober because you know she life with her is worth living life with her is amazing so I wouldn't I wouldn't you know use it I wouldn't say to people well you need to find the right person no you need to give up within yourself you need to stop that because it's something that you know is wrong the one hope is if I can do it um people say oh you're so strong because you no, no, I'm not strong. I, I just, I just knew it was time for me. With gambling, nobody can tell you that you know. Yeah, you could find yourself in the streets. You could find you know these are the things the the things you could find, the negative side of it. But it has to be you that wants to stop. You know, and I and I hope to one day be able to talk to people and share my story. Even though I'm talking about it now, I hope to. Just did. Well, I mean, talk to people six months from now, a year from now. Find somebody who's struggling just like I, I, I'm struggling. I don't say, I'll never say that I'm done, that I'm, that I'm cured. I mean, that doesn't happen. There is actually no cure. That's a misconception. There is no cure. Um, you just stay sober. Mm -hmm. That The actual addiction never goes away. Right. You just stay sober. It's so just it's, I choose to to live to live my life a little bit better now. I also choose to, you know, for those of you that come out to see me, you know, DJ Friday nights. I won't say where because this is not the place for that. But you guys come out and see me Friday nights. I've actually put time into what I've been doing. So lately, and I've, I'm blessed and I'm glad that I hear that. Lately, I've heard, "Oh my God, you killed it! You you." You know, I don't know how I was on autopilot for so long 
now I come I'm back with a purpose now I'm going to give you what I like I want you to feel my pain my pleasure my joys my I, with music I want you to feel how I'm feeling and not a mood DJ but you know if it's like if I want the night to go great I'm gonna do just that but I also want to touch people with, with the music you know so that's how I've been able to cope how, how I've been dealing with and you just need to surround yourself around positive people. Your yes. circle might get smaller. You might lose some friends. People are going to judge you. But so what? Do what's Even best for you. if it's family. I am actually very honored, very glad. You know, I want anybody watching this video and just watched it all the way to the end. You know, we're not doing this for money. This is not why we're doing this. This is not why we're not trying to get famous on here. I... I told Yolanda when, when I met her that she has a light within her. She says she's weak, that she that she's not the person that everybody sees. I have lived with her for the last six months and she is the strongest woman I've ever met in my life. How do you go from domestic abuse, domestic violence, everything that you've been through and I get emotional when I talk about it everything that you've been through and still wake up every morning put the makeup on get yourself ready for the day and you find out that I'm a compulsive gambler you still put the makeup on and you go about your day you still cook you still clean you still do every little thing this house can't function without you and yet you say I'm not strong I'm not so I see this light in you that you know that is, is brighter I'm the DJ I'm the one everybody sees playing and anymore when I go somewhere oh my god Yolanda is no longer hey DJ Nacho and the girl that he brought in this week it's you know the, the the way the way it is you know and I'm in awe you know I've always been in awe of things you do things you say how you are as a person so you know I'm I wanted to do this with you you know to, to shed light on you know things like this and yeah I'm gonna continue to push you know to get you you push me to stop gambling I'm gonna continue to push you not for the fame not for whatever just to one person, one person touched or moved by by this video is all we want. I had so. no idea that it was even going to reach out the first video that much. I've had people emailing me, texting me, um, messaging me privately and just saying, hey, thank you because you gave me, you know, courage to want to say it's okay to not be okay. And I'm so overwhelmed that I'm actually kind of like honored that people you know saw the video and that's what we're trying to do so <coughs> I couldn't even talk I was like holding it in I was like swallow you love to swallow <clears throat> and just share share the video blah, 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 blah. Wait, I'll do it. I'll do it because it's my job. <laughs> this will be in the bloopers. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> She doesn't talk about what she like she's just talking. Mm, that's true. Okay. Wait, wait. And addiction. And addiction. And addiction. Yeah. What did I say? Oh. They so <laughs> Ignacio DJ Nacho. Bah, 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 bah. Thank you, DJ Nacho. Just pumped up to say hello and now it's down back down below. 
you want to show lips though? Sure. Next time, if you guys subscribe enough, you'll see her do makeup on me. How about that? Well, actually, I will be. Doing makeup on me? Yeah.